Now, to show you how amazing this authority is and how in this decade of the mouth, you got to watch what you say because what you say causes spiritual activity. That's going to bring either the blessing, the angels, the Holy Spirit, or it's going to release demonic activity to start working in your life. And you have to understand your words when they come out of your mouth go into another realm. And angels or demons get their assignments from what you say. That's the kind of authority you have. And so you're going to have to pray like David, Lord, set a watch over my mouth. Why? Because this is a weapon of mass destruction. It is going to be what I said to the degree that Jesus said you will be able to say unto a mountain, be thou removed. Cast into the sea. Watch this. And it shall obey you. Why now? Because you understand the dynamics that the moment I speak God's word, then the power of God starts moving in another realm to cause the promises that I have decreed to come to pass. Ooh. This is what mesmerized Jesus. When the centurion came to him and said, Master, my servant is lying at home, grievously tormented with the devil. Jesus told the centurion, I will come and heal him. The centurion said, no, 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 no. He says, I know something about you that nobody else knows. I got a revelation about you, Jesus, that nobody else has. You don't even have to come to my house to heal my servant. Speak the word only. And my servant will be healed. Because he says, I am a man under authority. And when I say to this one, go, he goes. And when I say this one, come, he comes. And when I say this one, do this, he does it. He says, I understand how this works. If you got authority, your presence is not necessary. Jesus turned around to his disciples and said, did you hear that? I have not found such great faith in all of Israel. He says, how did you get that one revelation nobody else on planet earth had? He says, because I know how Authority works. He says, if you speak from here, spiritual activity will happen over there. And I've been watching you talk to stuff. And you don't have to be there to enforce authority. Because when you are in authority, you speak. When you have ability, you move. And he says, I've been watching you that whatever you say happens. And he says, I got it. You got authority. And Jesus said, go your way. Just go, go on to the house. It's done now. He's on his way home and he's met by his servant that says, good news, good news. Our servant who was paralyzed is healed. 
before the centurion started shouting, he said, what time did it happen? And he said, it was the self-same hour that Jesus told him, go his way. Now, I don't know who I came to Alabama to talk to. But I came to tell you that there are some circumstances and situations in your life that have met their expiration date. Because today, you are not going to put up with it. You're not going to talk about it, cry about it, complain about it, or even pray about it. You're going to talk to it, and it's going to obey your authority. Oh, somebody shout with a voice of triumph. Woo! My God! You have authority everyone standing we're going to release you mm. Woo! <laughs> we're fixing to release this authority you and I have yet to scratch the surface of who we are and what we possess that we have been given supernatural authority as speaking spirits in the earth realm to release God's authority. Now, you can't just walk around saying everything. It's got to be according to the will and word of God. But you have been given authorization by heaven to speak. And when you do, just know that what you're about to say, you're about to release spiritual activity for it. This is why some things can happen in your life. And you'd be like, what did that come from? Sometimes it's just an attack from the enemy. And you just bind the devils. I rebuke that. I shut that down right now. And if Satan has no grounds there. The Bible says you resist him and he will flee. What is difficult though is when you have said things that open the door for all of that activity. Through fear, through stress, through, through, through anger, through bitterness. Somebody told me, I told our church, somebody said to us, you know, you have to be, you, you have to live every day like it's your last. Because, you know, tomorrow's not promised. I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait just one minute. Oh, yes, it is promised. Oh, yes, it is. With long life, Psalms 91, shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. See, you know, what you don't understand is that death is graduation. Which means it's illegal to die if you ain't finished. If you get to heaven before you finish, they're going to be like, what, what, what? What you doing here? You ain't, you ain't even got started. You say, give me Bible for that. Paul said, I was shipwrecked. I was snake bitten. I was stoned. I was beaten. But I wasn't ready to die. <laughs> but then we get over to the book of Philippians. And he says, he says, you know, I've been thinking. I'm, I'm in a straight between two opinions. To, 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 to go on and be with the Lord, which is far better, or to stay here with you. I'm reading your Bible. <laughs> he said, or to stay here with you. He said, I think I'll stay a little bit longer. But then you get over to 2 Timothy and he says, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I'm now ready. And you need to, instead of getting up saying, my tomorrow's not promised, you need to get up and say, I will be here until I'm done. And there ain't nothing on this planet can take me out until I am 
done.